everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at the hyperbola, a grade 10 introduction. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments what you want to see next. Let's jump right in. First of all, this is the equation or the formula that represents a hyperbola and immediately you can recognize it because we are dividing by x. x is in the denominator. So let us have a look at the mother function y is equal to 1 over x and I just wanted to show you guys that instead of y I can say f of x is equal to 1 over x. In this case just remember that f of x this thing over here represents y my output values where x is my input value. So here I've just arbitrarily chosen input values from negative 3 to 3 including 0 over here. We're going to put the values for x into my x. Okay, so put the inputs in and calculate the y value, the output, in order to generate a set of coordinates. And we know that we're going to plot the coordinates and that's going to give us the function. Obviously, I'm going to show you better ways to plot the function in future so you don't have to use tables. But this is just to illustrate the basic shape of a hyperbola and very important things called asymptotes. Let's have a look. So what's happened so far is I've placed my x value into the function and I've obtained my y value in each, each case. And as you know, that gets us a coordinate, so negative 3 and negative a third, for example. Over here we've got negative 1 and negative 1. We're going to plot that later. So for example, this coordinate over there, negative 1, negative 1, would be over here. We're going to continue plotting that, but I just wanted to stop over here and do this with you. If I put x is equal to 0 into my function, so y is equal to 1 over 0, you should know that 1 divided by 0, anything divided by 0 is undefined. What that means is that the function does not exist at that place where x is equal to 0. That means that I need to draw in what we call an asymptote, which is a line that indicates that the function does not exist at that point on the Cartesian plane. We will discuss asymptotes in a little bit more detail later on, but basically an asymptote is a line that the function or the graph approaches. It gets close to it, but it never touches it. So in this case, because this will give me math error, because this is undefined, so undefined, anything divided by zero is undefined, at the point where x is equal to zero, so that's over here, I will draw in what we call our vertical asymptotes. That means that the graph will get close to the y-axis, but it'll never touch the y-axis. And that is why we have no y-intercept. Okay, so all these things should be making sense. It should be coming together. If I continue filling this table in, we're going to get positive 1, positive a half, and positive a third. I can then get take these coordinates, plot it on the graph. Let's join the points and see what the shape of the hyperbola looks like. So there we go, we've got our basic shape of our mother function. However, I've forgotten to draw in the two very important asymptotes. So we will have a vertical asymptote, so a line that goes like this along the y-axis like we've mentioned. So I can draw that one in there at the point x is equal to 0. You draw it very close to the asymptote for me. So that's called my vertical asymptote. And then I also have a horizontal asymptote. And if you look carefully at the graph, if I had to extend the x-axis this way and keep plotting x is equal to 4, x is equal to 5, think about it. It'll become um, a negative a half, negative a third, negative a quarter, negative a fifth. So my graph will keep getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but it'll never touch it. That means I need another horizontal asymptote that goes this way. So I have two asymptotes. And I've drawn in here that my vertical asymptote, the one that I've highlighted in yellow, is where x is equal to 0. So you can see where this dotted line cuts the x-axis. It is at the point where x is equal to 0. That's where it cuts the x-axis. And the reason why we have an asymptote there is because x over here in my function cannot equal 0 because 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And this is why we don't have a y-intercept. Okay, So my vertical asymptote is where x is equal to 0. Now, my horizontal asymptote is where y is equal to 0 for this very specific function. A very quick way to tell where your horizontal asymptote will be is to look at your q-value. Whatever your q-value is, that is your horizontal asymptote. So if q over here was plus 2, then I would have a horizontal asymptote at plus 2. 
over here we can see that our function is y is equal to 1 over x. That means that q is 0. That is why my horizontal dotted line is where y is equal to 0. That also means that for this function there will not be a x-intercept. So no x-intercept either. Remember we also don't have a y-intercept. That's because the function gets very close to the x-intercept, but it does not cut it. If you have a look at this function over here, the function y is equal to 1 over x plus 2, we can immediately see that our horizontal asymptote, this one, will be at the line y is equal to 2. Our vertical asymptote will be at the line x is equal to 0, again, because x cannot be 0. Now, a very important thing to understand about a hyperbola is that it will either have a shape that'll look like this, okay, in this quadrant, and in this quadrant, that's where the function will exist, or it'll have a shape that looks like this, okay, you can see the different quadrants, the opposite quadrants to the initial shape. And that all depends on the a value. Now, I wrote over here a value, however, some textbooks may call this over here k. Doesn't necessarily have to be a, but basically it's the number, the, co the number and the sign on top of the fraction. Okay, that determines the shape. So I have over here, if a is greater than zero, so in other words, if it's a positive value, my function will look like this in these two quadrants. If a is less than zero, in other words, if it's negative, it will look like this. And the way that I remember it, I just scribbled it up here for you, is I remember that in a linear function, y is equal to mx plus c, if my gradient, my m value, is positive, then we have an increasing function that goes up like this. You can see that it kind of like exists in the same two quadrants. If I have a linear function where y equals mx plus c, but m is negative, then it's a decreasing function. So when we say increasing and decreasing in terms of these linear functions over here, I mean if you read from left to right, so this way, okay, as the x values go more and more positive. So this one's a decreasing function. You can see it's going down like that. That is if m is negative. Same thing here. If a is negative, it's existing in these two quadrants. I hope that helps you remember it. Then these are just some summary slides to help you remember about your, your vertical asymptote. So it's where x is equal to 0. And your horizontal asymptote, right? Where y is equal to the value of q. Here's that example again that I showed earlier, illustrating that our horizontal asymptote is positive 2, y, y is equal to positive 2, and our vertical asymptote is x is equal to 0, which means there's no y-intercept. Now remember, grade 10s, it makes sense that there's no y-intercept, because remember, to find your y-intercept, you must make x 0. And we already said that if I put 0 in the place of x, we're going to get 1 over 0, which is undefined. So there is no y-intercept. However, in the case of this function over here, y is equal to 1 over x plus 2, we must find the x-intercept and we must just label it on the graph. So I can kind of see where I think it is, but to get it exactly, to find the x-intercept, we must make y 0. Remember, to find the y-intercept, make x 0. To find the x-intercept, make y 0. That means that I take my function and in the place of y, I'm going to substitute a 0. So I've got 1 over x plus 2. If I take the 2 over, it's going to become 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. And I get 1 over x. If you struggle with solving something like this, just please remember this very simple rule. If your variable is at the bottom of a fraction, in other words, if it's in the denominator, in order to solve for that variable, you need to swap that variable, so you need to swap the denominator, with whatever is over here on the left-hand side. So what I mean is the x and the negative 2 swap places. So the x goes over here, and the negative 2 goes over here. So x is equal to negative a half. That means that my x-intercept is where x is negative a half, y is 0. Remember, in the place of y, we subbed 0. Then we got x is negative a half. So I can fill that in there. That looks about right. Where x is negative a half, y is zero. Remember, we're always going to label our intercepts where possible. Now, in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to draw a hyperbola, how to sketch a hyperbola using these steps. If you'd like to see this video and you'd like to see me go through some examples, please let me know in the comments below. 
I would also like to do a video on finding the equation of this function. So if I give you the function, if I give you a picture and you need to find the equation, how to go about that, how to do that. And I'd also like to practice some past papers involving functions. You guys need to let me know what you want to see in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Love you guys.